Welcome everyone. Just remember before we get started, if you want to download the project links, it will be down below in the description. Just all you got to do is enter your email and it's completely free. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we will be continuing our animation and completing the attack, uh, essentially adding the sword, right? So where's my player here? Oh, there we go. So we'll also be uh, exploring some other things inside of Godot. Uh, so first, we, what we'll do is we're going to take our player and right click him. And what we'll do is save branch as seen. And you'll see what this does in a second. But now let's save it in our scenes folder and create a player folder. We'll save. And now if we go into our scene, our player scene and click this little button right here, you'll see our player in his own scene. Now everything is not in the middle and we want everything to center in the middle. So what we can do is just take our player, go to transform, position and reset it. And now he will be reset in the middle, which is good for us because now in the world, we can take our player and move him around wherever. And we can kind of control him in here or edit our player inside of its own scene. So there's a lot of advantages to this. Uh, but yeah, so Okay, let's delete this, whatever that is. <laughs> okay, one thing we'll need to do is add an animated sprite. Don't worry, this one's not gonna have too many, but essentially we're gonna hold the animations for our sword. So uh, in here, we'll create its own animation, the sprite frame. And if you wanna test yourself, you can do totally pause the video and try this yourself. So essentially what we'll do is we'll have attack down, have attack up, have attack left and attack right. So we're going to load in the sword animation uh, for this guy. So if we go into the attack right, go into assets, villager, uh, attack, equipment, uh, here we can actually find the attacks that are being uh, used, right? So here is a villager attack. In fact, I'm going to have to take it out to find out which one uh, we're going to want. So that's the beard, that's the shoes, that is something I don't know. We're going to want to find the sword. So either this one or this one. Okay, so we have two, which is nice. So the attack right, what we'll do is we'll load in uh, this guy. So this is the wooden sword. So we'll attack, we'll put these in and essentially we'll load these in. So this should be the attack right. So if I loaded this, it's as if my player is attacking to the right. Okay. So now what we'll do is do the same thing for all of these. We'll load these in and I'll do this with you. So that way uh, we don't get lost. I believe this is up attack left. Should be this one and attack down should be uh, the top one. All right. Now, essentially what we want to do is sync the attack animation with this one with the uh, attack animation with the attack, right? So we don't actually have to sync anything. All we really have to do is just, well, do it at the same time. So here, what we can do is let's rename this to sword uh, anim. We can name this to player anim. Okay. Now in the, well, in the sword anim, let's select this, go back to the animation tab, and in the attack down, we can key this sprite frame. We don't need a reset track, it doesn't really matter. And then we'll key the frame, of course, right? So make sure that we start at the very first one, and we'll create. And now you can see that every frame, you should be synced up. We actually play it later. Uh, four, five, five should be this one. Okay, there we go. So now we should look like this. So it actually looks like he's holding a sword and not just you know attacking in the air. So now we can do the same thing for each of those. We'll key the frame. Uh, we're gonna want to also key it. No, we're not gonna want to actually key the sprite frame. My bad. We want to uh, do this one, the attack left. Not sure I got confused there. So we'll go back to the attack down, make sure we select attack down here and we can delete this sprite frame. So we don't need this. I'm not sure why I put that there. That was a mistake. 
Okay, so the spray frame will delete that. But the animation gets set to attack left, and we'll just put the frame zero, uh, one, two, three, four, and five. And we will do that for each of these. So attack right. Looks like I might have confused attack right and left though, so I might have to fix that in just a second. For now, what we'll do is we'll do this. Yeah, it looks like I got them reversed. So the attack right and left are actually the opposite. So this one is right and this one is the left. So let's make sure that we actually do that right. And then in the animation player, uh, it should actually fix itself. So let's just double check. Awesome. And now we just have attack up. So we'll do the same thing. So let's go back to the animation, attack up, uh, key that. And we'll key the frame. And now we go to the next frame and just key all the frames. Awesome. That is it for our attack. So it might look a little choppy for now, but that's okay. So now our attack is essentially synced because we just play everything inside of the animation player. So that's pretty good. Um, the only thing though is the visibility. The visibility, we don't want it to be showing when I'm moving, right? So here you can see the sword is next to me, but that, <laughs> that looks funny. So to fix this, it's actually pretty easy. We can do this in the animation. Uh, so what we'll do is in here, uh, in the sword anim, we will go to the animation sword and we will go to uh, visibility, make sure that visibility is on. And then when the animation is finished, we'll turn it off. So we'll actually do it at the very end at 0 0.55 and we'll turn it off. So now it should look like this. The sword disappears at the end. And we'll do this for each of these. So I'll reset it here. Now at the very end, turn it off and just repeat uh, for all of the animations. All right, so that's attack left and now attack down. And this is the last one. And now what we can see is that when I play and I attack, the sword shows and it disappears right after, which is awesome. Okay, we have finished the attack and everything. Now the only thing we have left is the death animation, if you recall. So we need to do the death animation. So let's go to death here uh, and let's make sure that we add all of them. So there's gonna be death up, death down, death right and death left. Okay, I'm gonna do this and I will speed up and I will meet you when you are done as well. So this should be relatively easy and I want you to try it on your own as well. All right. Now you can see I've loaded in all the death animations. Now we want to repeat the same thing for the animation player. So again, I will speed this part up and I will meet you when I'm done, all right? All right, I have loaded in all the animation players for the animation player. Um, so we have all the frames here and I ended up getting 1.1 seconds for each of one. And now we have to do the animation tree. So this one uh, we'll do together because it's not too difficult and it won't take too long. Let's just create our blend space here, open editor, and make sure we select this guy, make sure we select this blend, and we will click, add the animation, death down, death right, death up on the bottom. There we go, death up, and then death uh, left on the left. All right, now let's make sure that we select this and put it at the right point. One, one, I believe. There we go. Uh, and now that's it. So we pretty much have our death, but we need to be able to transition. So we'll add for our idle to death and we'll turn off auto. Okay, let's head over to our script and let's complete some things. Now I'm going to click this. So if in case you're wondering, actually, if you click this little uh, make the script editor floating, it will bring out the script and it might be a little easier for you to see the code this way. So I'm gonna uh, do it this way. But of course, you feel free to do whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, now we want to create a death animation kind of, right? Or a way to get to the death animation. 
Now, the way we'll do this is we'll actually create a hit function. And this will pass through a variable called damage. And what we'll do is we want to say health minus equals damage. And then we'll say if health is less than or equal to zero, we can travel to the death. So here, we can just travel to death. And of course, we do want to also set the parameter for our death over here for the blend space and the blend position. Now you can see we get an error, and that's because we don't have a health yet, which makes sense because we never created it. So let's add it and say health, and this is an integer. So we'll give this, let's say five. And then for the attacking, let's make sure we set this to a Boolean, and that is it. So now we have an attack, a health, and we even have our function hit damage, uh, and we can travel to the death. All right, now what we can do though is once our, uh, travel finishes, what we can actually do is we can await until this animation finishes. Now this is a cool thing in Godot that we can just say await and then get the anim tree and say animation finished. Now once the animation of the death is finished, what we can do is we can just say self dot to free. All right, now we'll save this and let's we'll try it. Well, we can't try anything. So why don't we, uh, let's go to our player script and we'll create a ready function. And what we'll do is we'll say hit five. So on ready, uh, we will hit our player for five health, which should kill us, right? Uh, and so we should be able to see the death animation. And before we do that, why don't we also add a camera 2D to make this guy uh, on top of our player here and we will reset the position on our player to zero, zero, and let's zoom in by two. All right, now if I play, okay, I'm not playing the uh, death animation, so let's take a look at what's happening. Let's go to the remote uh, when I'm playing my game. Now the remote and local, uh, the local is basically where I actually edit things, and remote is happening in real time. So I can actually see the variables that are being edited or what is happening in the actual uh, game, right? Okay, so we can see here that the health did go down, which is good, but that means for some reason we did not travel to the death. So why don't we take a look at our player, see if we wrote this correctly. Okay, so we did, and the transition should work, but it didn't. So why is that? All right, let's stop the game, and let's take a look at our death and see what happens if I try playing it. So it does play. And here we say, if it's less than, so let's try printing something to see if this will go off. If I play, I should, yeah, play death anim. Okay, that's strange. Okay, so here we have a bug. I'm going to debug this and I will be right back. Okay. So uh, I made a very normal mistake that uh, I told you guys about, which was the attacking. So if you recall, the issue with the attacking was that we couldn't just go to the attack because here we're also going to the idle. And then we added this variable called attacking. Now we need to do the same thing, but for death. So what we'll do is we'll duplicate this guy and say dying is a Boolean that's false. And here we'll say, We'll put this in its own brackets, and then we'll say or uh, attacking, well not attacking, we're gonna say or dying is false. Uh, actually not or, we're gonna have to say and, because we want uh, dying and attacking to be false. And then what we can do is in here, we can say dying is equal to true. So that way we don't travel back to idle or walk. Now if we hit play, there we go. There's our death animation, and once it's done, our player disappears and you can actually confirm this by going to the remote and you can see that the player no longer exists. Okay, that is pretty much it for our player. We have a lot of uh, things set up in our player. There's gonna be more, of course, because for example, the attack doesn't actually hit anything, uh, but first we need to add some more things. So the monster and stuff. So we'll add a monster and see if we can actually get it to work and actually hit the monster and so on. So. Uh, that's what we'll do in the next video, and I will see you all in the next video.